everyone welcome back today we're going to be talking about the style token documentation components mini library what is this right like this is just a little freebie that I created for the figma community uh, so basically have a, a color chip and a topography chip and, and the goal here is to uh, spruce up your uh, style and or design tokens documentation in figma if you have it in figma uh, so um that's pretty much it it's based on 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 previous uh, work that i've done previous components that i've done for design systems that i worked on so it already comes with some of the knowledge that i had from them uh but hopefully you can actually uh, help me improve it if you find like uh, any uh, potential improvements that they have let's go to the readme uh, and you can see here small readme uh, a little bit about it and then I, I, I kind of like add a little bit of a plug, which is like this style library, this component library for Figma is free, but I'm actually selling you, if you want, an automation called Update the Style Token Docs for the Automator plugin. Uh, I custom made it just for this component library, just for these components. Uh, you can find it on my Buy Me a Coffee. You have the link here. I'm going to provide the link to both uh, the the freebie and the the the, the sellable uh, on the video description, so you can find it there, or you go and, and find it on the Figma community and search for, well, Figma style token documentation components. Uh, you have the video here, the same video that, uh, that I'm actually now recording, so it's going to be a little bit of inception. Uh, still not, because this video doesn't exist yet here. Um, and then uh, I have a little bit of a warning. Uh, if you buy the automation, if, or I gave it to you because uh, you're one of my friends, uh, don't change the name of the components or the instances or the internal layers uh, without updating the automation also. Otherwise, you're going to click the automation, you won't do anything, and you're going to be clueless about that so if that happens remember that i warned you um and then i have a little bit of like a written documentation uh, going into details for each of the components what you can change what you can't uh, even i even used a little bit of a, a corner smoothing to get a little bit more of a ios style circle on the on the college chip and and so if you want that out because you're editing these to look like your design language uh, i gave you a little bit of a clue where the, this is uh, on the corner radius and then on the on the rightmost i have the the change log so the little improvements i already made to this freebie uh, you can see that i kind of haven't really published it officially like it's shadow published like i see that at least two people already got it without without it actually being complete in terms of not having the full instruction in, in video uh and you already have three updates because i saw like very easy improvements that i could add uh, so later on uh, let me know uh, in the comments or reach out to me and, and let me know what else could i have here uh, i'll get back to this uh, so let's check the components we have here the color chip and trademark in this case just a little bit of fun innuendo uh, trademark here is not trademark it's actually my two first names Tiag Miguel uh, so a little bit of a plug that I keep on using I've been using it for almost 20 years now and I haven't gotten sick of it uh, sorry about that like I really apologize uh, but you can see here you have like a horizontal layout uh, for the color chip and then you have a Pantone style uh, vertical layout this if you ever use the Pantone color book will bring a bell to you uh just google it but uh, i actually i actually have like one of them one of them here uh, you can see here you can see that where i got the inspiration for it uh that's another little aside um you can see here it has the the style name uh it comes with all the folder structure if in case if you're using like figma uh, folder structures on your style names or with the design token full name. Um, and then it comes with the X value, with an RGBA value. And the same goes for the type chip. The type chip comes with the specimen, comes with all the metadata about the style. So the name, the font, 
family, the weight, the font size, the line height, the letter spacing. And it also has a little space for your Figma style description if you have those, uh, which I kind of recommend you have because they give you your your consumers a little bit more information when using your library or, or your design system. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a preview of how you edit the components. So you have them here as instances. You can, on the color chip, just come here and change to another style. And this is important. This is the first thing uh, that you want to do even if you don't want to change like any of the design itself, uh, just add your styles to, to the component and, and start documenting uh, the different groupings that you have. Uh, you also see that it's like uh, transparency proof. So whenever you have a color style that has an alpha, you know, and you can see, okay, this color style has an alpha just at a glance. So a nice one that I kind of like learned uh, in my times at Klarna, where I was like, okay, how do how do I see those like very light grays? And then I was like, okay, this is actually a good idea because it will allow you to see the 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 alpha color styles in one in one glance of an eye. Uh, yes, we can now even like edit, make our make it our own. I recommend that you do that on the component, so then you kind of like transition to or inherit to every instance that you have, uh, or you can come here and change it to enter, of course. And oh, there you go. Uh, and then if you regret any of the changes, just reset all changes or reset just one single change, depending on what you do, what you want. Let me also reset these. All good. Let, let me show you a little bit of a example of what your layout for the documentation of colors and types could look like. I'm actually not giving you a good example because normally you'd want a little bit more information, maybe have like a two column layout on a little card that gives you a little bit of context. When should you use these colors? When should you use primary colors? But that is so dependent on your design system that I don't want to give you my uneducated opinion about uh, what what works for your organization and for your designers and for your developers. Make sure that you don't fall into that error. Uh, design systems are not one size fits all. You need to adapt them to whoever and, and whatever organization wants them. Uh, otherwise, it, it doesn't make much sense to create a system. Uh, but you see here, like you'd be able to come make them like vertical. My recommendation is that you actually use auto layout, which I'm not using here. So my bad, uh, but not, not a biggie, uh, because it's just for the demo. And the reason for that is you might have very longer call names, color names. And unless you want to increase the width, which it does, because this is an auto layout component, uh, it will actually grow in height. Uh, if it grows in height and you don't have auto layout, means that now you automated hopefully uh, the 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 editing of of every value on the style, like on the color chip or on the typography chip, and 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 now you have to manually every time that you do an update manually update the layout that doesn't make much sense it's better to just try to automatize everything uh, to give you as little trouble as possible uh, let's let's see yes i think now it's the time for that uh, nice demo so as i said um, you have uh, you can buy the the automation uh, after you buy it you're going to get an email it's going to come attached to that email and then you're going to want to use the Automator plugin. I have it here on the community page. Uh, Automator, there's a few. Look for Automator by Diagram. Uh, this is done by Jordan Singer and the team. Uh, amazing, amazing product designer. Very, very, very uh, active uh, plugin maker, like just design tooling maker. I really like, I really appreciate like the time that he saved me. Uh, with this plugin already, like in other ones that he's working on in this team, uh, just consider it. Uh, it's free for one automation. And then you can either uh, delete and import again uh, another automation, 
or you can just pay for it like monthly, which I have done for the last almost two years. And there's even a, like a team subscription where it means that every automation in the case of like a non-team subscription is local. And then you have to export JSONs and import them again to the tool in each computer that you use. Now, if you're using the team subscription, uh, everyone in that team will have access to all the automations that were created for that team, which I feel like it's a really good value in, in, in anywhere where you're not the single designer. Uh, yeah, let's go back to it and not get distracted too much. Let's do command forward slash to get the quick actions. You can initiate the plugin from the normal places, but I prefer this way. Let's say automator. And you see here, it's empty. I emptied it out just for the demo. Uh, and you could create an automation from scratch. And, and to be honest, like you could probably start, if you know a little bit of code, start seeing how you could get the layer names and build an automation to fill up this data, right? But I've done that for you. Uh, I've charged for it because I think it's, it, it provides like a lot of value and it's a way for me to get some of that tasty, tasty passive income. Um, passive income, yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, uh, But yeah, I think this will save you like probably like hundreds of hours in the long run. And I'm give, keeping like the price at a decent amount, like so 15 bucks, uh, $15. Uh, and then if you're part of my buy me a coffee monthly uh, members, you get it for five bucks. So big discount, little plug there if you want to support these activities that I'm doing now very actively, like I'm while I'm working uh, for another job um, and in a very slow market. So I think like very likely I'm gonna be doing it for another few months. Uh, you can actually uh, help me uh, support myself for a little bit, give me an extra push, give me an incentive so I can create like nice stuff for the community. Uh, but let's, without further ado, click the settings here, import the JSON. Uh, you'd get it wherever you have it. That's pretty much it. It's now it's here. You see that there's one for color chip, one for type chip. And and now all you need to do is you open the page where you want to update the color styles or the typography styles, and you click it. That's it. See. You would probably spend maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on your speed of, of doing this work, uh, updating this, just these. And in a normal, like, uh, in a normal library, you'd get much more color styles than these. So you can see here, you added the, 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 the name, the X value, the RGBA value on the typography edited. I mean, all of the metadata from the style. And and without the without an effort, right? Like it's it's amazing, like uh, what you can do with a little bit of uh, code jobs. Now imagine that um, you would have much more of these, and and it would take you likely like one hour, two hours, three hours every time, every time uh, you do a rebrand or every time that you create all of these styles from scratch uh, to document, right? Now you have your life much 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 easier. Uh, I first came up with this after I saw Automator and then I was updating manually for days and I was like, hmm, I think I can do an automation for this. And so it didn't take as long as it was taking me to edit the styles. It didn't uh, like drain my soul dry <laughs> of all the boring, like repetitive tasks. Uh, and this is, I think, like one of those right automations to have. Uh, designers don't don't need their creativity to manually update values. And this is where I think automations and potentially at some point AI is going to help us. But without me <laughs> into a preaching about this, that's pretty much it. Um, you can find all the links on the video description. You're welcome to try it. Some of my close friends already have uh, it for free, so they can also try it on their own. Uh, and I'll continue working on this. 
let me know what else could I improve, uh, uh, what other like um, design token uh, documentation things you have that you have ideas for, like for instance, like how do you illustrate corner radius or border radius? How do you illustrate motion? Like this library could grow like with your contribution and with your user pains. Uh, and even if it's not this library, uh, let me know, like, is there something that you're doing that's very repetitive? I might be able to do an automation for you or might even create a widget or a plugin, like depends, like just let me know, reach out. I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to uh, keep busy to have my side hustles that right now are a bit of like main hustles, but it keeps me on my on my toes and, and, and allows me to continue growing as a designer and also as like a coding fan. And I uh, hope you liked it. I hope you try it. I hope you see the value and uh, catch you later. <laughs>